when we are talking about, you know, hey, I've been filled with the Holy Spirit. Now I've got more of the Holy Spirit because of, I've been baptized with the Holy Spirit. It, it would behoove us to know more of what we got. You know, what what, what did we get? Okay, the Holy Spirit saved me. Jesus saved me. The Holy Spirit made me a new creation. That's cool. I'm going to heaven. But what else? Well, there's a lot else. There's a whole lot more. And he had me wear a jogging suit tonight. The Holy Spirit did. Now, I heard him say this. I heard, I heard him say, I hope you got your running shoes on tonight. So I said, oh. I better get my sweatshirt. I better put my jogging pants on the priest tonight. Amen. You know, it's not a fashion contest up here, but we do want to dress nice and be respectful. But tonight I'm, I'm being a sign and a wonder. This is very symbolic. Uh, with these lights, it's a little hot. But hey, we'll, we'll press through. For all they know, when they're watching it years from now, they're going, they must be preaching that in the winter in North Dakota. They would have thought it was. July 3rd in Fall Harbor, Florida in a building that has no air conditioning yet. The way it does, doesn't it? I, we try, try to do it right. You know, living here helps. You can kind of keep keep it going and not a lot of in and out kind of things going on. Anyway, um, tonight somebody asked me one time, how, how do you get your messages? How do you know what to share when you share. Is it lightning bolts? Is it handwriting on the wall? You just go pull off everybody else's stuff and re-preach it? Well, there's there's a number of ways. One of the ways that I, I have found to be the most delightful is, is, for, is paying attention to the conversations that I'm having with people, random people, not random to me, but just random to each other, maybe. In individual settings. And I've noticed that things come in threes like that. If, if I'm talking to one about casting out devils, and the Holy Spirit's wanting to emphasize that, there'll be two others that show up somewhere, and I'll go out. Instead of just spending all my time talking individually with people, I might want to construct something for the large majority of people. Because just taking a random sampling right now, that liquid thing is just waste the Holy Ghost wind flowing. Evidently, right now this season, more people are, are needing to hear about casting out devils, so I'll construct something for that. I've done that many times. One time I did it with my kids are not doing well in school academically. And I had that several times with parents or, or, or kids themselves until I finally put together a series of messages on it and just sent it out in mass to people. The notes, the written notes and the video, and we'd make a CD copy, you know, or two. Well, in, in, in three conversations recently, they've all come back to divine healing. And, and, and if you've ever seen, now I don't drink, but if you've ever seen a wine glass or a martini glass, it's wide at the top, it narrows to the stem. And the, the rim would be these two general conversations or things on divine healing. And they got narrow to a point, and it was the role of the Holy Spirit in receiving healing. And that's the message for tonight. Now that still stays true to our day nine of 15 days of fire, because in the doctrine of baptisms is all about the person of the Holy Spirit. Because one of those those baptisms is the baptism with the Holy Spirit and fire. And so if we, we were to, to skip over that and not talk about the Holy Spirit, I think we'd miss the boat. <laughs> I really do. And going into this, I didn't spend, plan to spend as much time on the Holy Spirit. You know, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't looking for a way to talk all about it. We can do that anytime. But I've just discovered, I'm learning too as I'm teaching this. One of the greatest ways to learn is to teach. I'm learning. There's where things fit. You know, if you're scrolling through a, a famous Christian TV station and you see them talking about different things, yeah, I, I would venture to say your ears will now perk up and go, okay, which of the six 
Does what they're teaching fall into the category of? Because by and large, it will. Because until the body has got no six down, listen to me now, until the body of Christ at large has got no six down, that's what Joe State moving on. He said there's no point. He's the foundation ain't laid to move on. So you just gotta watch and, and, and separate, you know, what eat the hay and leave the sticks. But I, I would I would look for that. If they're teaching on grace, now you know which one it is. Repentance from dead works. Very first one. If they're teaching on faith, now you know which one it is. It's the second one, faith towards God. If they're teaching on the power of God, the Holy Spirit, the gifts, now you know which one it is. It's the doctrine of baptism. If they're teaching on healing, it's probably faith in the laying on of hands. They're teaching on the end times, now you know. It's either the resurrection of the dead or eternal death. You see, they'll, they'll pilot different things. They might even themselves know they're preaching these things. But this, is, this will help you make sense of what's coming at you via media and your ministers and the people you hear. Does that make sense? I'm saying all that. It's, it's, it should encourage you. Oh, that's what's going on. That's what the Holy Spirit says. Here's the statement I want you to remember. I mean, beyond all things that we talk about tonight, I want you to remember this. All of Christ's work. Now, tonight we're talking about healing. But you would be safe to say all of Christ's work was done by the Holy Spirit while He was on earth. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for tonight. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity to hear your name, the name above every name, not only in heaven but in earth. Thank you, Father, for your precious Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for your wisdom. Thank you for your love inside of us, pouring out of us that never fails. We thank you that according to Isaiah 54, 17, that no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper. Our faith remains, our work remains, our hearts are changed by the power of God tonight. Thank you for your precious blood. We find all distraction and devices that are of, of any origin other than you, and traps and tricks, and deceptions, and worries and anxieties, and frustrations and doubts and fears, and we just bind all that up in a bundle in the name of Jesus, and we toss it over to the sea of forgetfulness. Over into your hands, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Name. Amen. I have this such a piece of heaven about it. Like, it's eternally going to be all right. Not just the right here, but it's eternal. We must be pleasing the Lord. That's what that is. That's, that's not just His peace. That's His pleasure right there. We're walking by faith right now. <laughs> Flying by faith. Now that seems easy to do up here preaching and that, but I'm talking about the whole of everything. The, the behind the veil, things you don't know, things you don't see. Right now. Pleasure of the Lord. Like a big hand of God going. Do you do that, rub your belly? And say, Paul, want a cracker. All of Christ's works were done by the Holy Spirit. How powerful, how involved is this person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit? You know, you ever heard the expression where your ears burn? You know, you talk about the Holy Spirit long enough, he'll come, he'll show up. You make him feel welcome. It's old. I like to go where I'm celebrating and not just tolerating. You've been in spirit-filled churches, supposed to be spirit-filled churches, and it's like they, they tolerate the Holy Spirit. Well, we said we're Holy Spirit, so we got to have some of this and some of that, but not too much. So we're going to get uncomfortable. Well, I, I understand being scriptural. We, don't want, to be, we want to be scriptural, comfortable. I, I've heard it said Christ came to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comforted. <laughs> Acts 10 and 38 says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. Now everything on the left of a colon, now this is where my other degree comes in, my English degree. 
everything on the left of the colon is equal to everything on the right. That's what a colon means. It's just an equal sign. Now, I didn't need an English degree to get to know that, but that's high school, but, you know, it sounded fancy. So it says, he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Well, in what form was God with him? Well, it says here he was anointed with the Holy Spirit and the power that comes from the Holy Spirit. And that's how he went about, and that's how he did good, and that's how he healed all that were oppressed of the devil. There is so much in that verse that we could spend a year picking it apart. We really could. First thing, notice the war. The devil's oppressing. God is healing. Now you think about how powerful that statement is. How many endless conversations have you had with people over the topic of divine healing? And they might want to say something like, well, maybe God's trying to teach me something. You know, maybe God's just trying to get glory through my suffering. Well, you know all things work together. Does it, really, does it really work for your good when you're laid up sick in bed about to die? Is that really working for your good? No, the context of that is in the Spirit. All things in the Spirit that, ha that happen work together for your good. Things that are in the flesh are not working for my good. I've got to go put them down. I've got to go find them. you got to watch how the theology comes at you. It's, it's, it's almost like a yin and yang theology. You know the yin and the yang? You've seen that Chinese thing? Little swirl, the white swirl, the black swirl. There's a little good and there's a little evil. They try to put that up on God. There's a little evil in him, there's a little good in him. Yeah, that's the way people talk. Well, he might be trying to teach me something. So you're saying he put the sickness on him. Really? You're calling him yin. His name ain't yin or yang. God is with the Jesus. So that means he's against the oppression of the devil. And that the Bible calls that all that were sick were sick because in some way, shape, or form the devil was oppressing them. Now that's really cut and dry right there. And the way that they got healed, the way that they got unoppressed, by the Son of God Himself, he, he gives the credit to the Holy Ghost. You, you talk about, you got a, a great engine in your car, and you got a great road ahead of you. But brother, if you ain't got no oil, you ain't going far. Now, you serve a great God, and you might be full of the Word, and you might have a call to eternity in fact. But if the Holy Spirit is not at work in a real, tangible way, you are going to break down. And we'll find you on the side of the road somewhere. Yeah. It happens every single time. Yeah. Isaiah 61, Jesus, this is Isaiah prophesying, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon you. Because the Lord hath anointed me. So anointing, not anointing, but anointing, comes from the Holy Spirit. And he and the Holy Spirit is has the anointing is is, is the Holy Spirit is God on human flesh doing what only God can do. That's a real good way to understand the anointing. Doing what only God can do because of him on your flesh. He has anointed me to preach. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. 
that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. Luke 4, 17 through 19 says, And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon you. So he turned to Isaiah 61. That would be the title of Isaiah 61 at the time. He just did a scroll of Isaiah. He found the place where it was written. And he says this is Jesus' first sermon. This is his first sermon. It's his most popular sermon. He preaches it all. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart. The Spirit of God is why I'm able to heal. Is what he said. To preach deliverance to the captives, recovering the sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Well, that's all well and good for Jesus, but what about you and I? Well, in Romans 8, 11, Paul says, But if the Spirit of Him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by His Spirit that dwelleth in you. So the Holy Spirit that anointed Jesus to heal, the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is living in you and I, and He'll quicken you to do those very same things if you let Him. It's important to remember something here. Jesus you know there's a thing called false humility you know it's a false sense of pride you know that there's confidence there's boldness and then there's pride and rudeness I mean there's just ditches to me but Jesus was always you watch you read his ministry you read his word he was always consistently telling people he was anointed. And he was anointed to do these specific things. He always told who he was, whose he was, and what he could do. And he said, follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. So, it would be safe to assume that it would be all right. As a matter of fact, it would be more than all right for you to tell lost people, sick people, bound people, empty people, undiscipled people what you were anointed to do. Who you are, whose you are, and what you can do through them. And in fact, I'll tell you this, if you don't, I believe you'll have less success. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. And if you'll let people know what God does and can do through you, through Christ, people will buy into it. There'll be an air of expectation that there wasn't before. You see, as long as you realize that it is Jesus in you doing it, I say go for it. I mean, ideally, Jesus gives us a word picture. He says, I don't hear, say, or do anything of my own accord. Everything I do and say, I do only what I see my Father say and do. In other words, Jesus is constantly living a life of getting out of His Father's way. Constantly getting out of His Father's way. Now, His Father's using Him as a vessel, using Him as a vehicle to get His will done. That makes it legal. He needed a human body to do it through to make it legal in the earth. But Jesus is basically saying, I have divorced myself from my own way of doing things. And I am married to the Lord's way of doing things. So why wouldn't he say I'm anointed to do it? Because he knows it's the Father through the Holy Spirit in him doing it. So if you'll get out of the Lord's way, and you'll divorce yourself from your own way of thinking, and embrace and marry his way of thinking, and start talking like that. Hey, you know, I have I have had a great success in praying for the sick in the name of Jesus. 
And you talk like that for a while, and guess what will start to happen? If it hasn't already happened, you'll start having a great success with healing the sick in the name of Jesus. Because you can have what you say. I, I have been used to pray for many, many people to be delivered from various addictions. Really? Really? And then they'll start treating you like a genie in a box. Like a magic wand. Yeah. I, I was in a Bible school in Ghana. And I was preaching to them. It, it was it not what the standing room on it. They were they were sitting up on the stage. I couldn't go left or right and stepping on the hand. Pressed in, shaking together, running out the windows, looking in the windows, out the yard. And we had a movement of that. And I preached it out And at the end, we gave a healing call. And, and, and my, they almost, my guests almost left me to go to lunch because people were still 30 minutes after the service in a line to get healed. And in that healing line, a Muslim man, old enough to be my father, former Muslim man, fell on his knees in front of me and said, please put your hand on me and pray for me and the Bible the way you do. In India, as we began to minister healing, there just things just start happening. And you're back several days in a row. And, and at the end of the healing, she'll stop going. They'll come up for healing and you'll see four ministers on the platform. And you'll see a few there, a few there. And then here's my life. And I'm going to farm out. And they're not coming, they're, they're coming up to me and they're just doing like this. Balance like I'm somebody. Well, I am a child. You know. Yeah, should I be bashful about that? Should I act like that doesn't happen? Should I not tell that? Why well, should? Because it increases faith. It increases. It. It's not. It's. It's. It, if, if it's faith in me, it's faith in my ability to get out of the Lord's way. <laughs> if I've got any s secret to success, any skill, it's I'm all day long listening. Lord, how can I get out of your way? If I'm sending a text, Lord, what should I type? If I'm writing a message, Lord, what should the next line be? All day, practices. Twenty years. Twenty plus years. Practicing this. Paul said the same thing. I will, in Romans 15, 18 through 19, for I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ hath not wrought by him. Notice he did wrought it by him. To make the Gentiles obedient by word and deed, through mighty signs and wonders, by the power of the Spirit of God. So that from Jerusalem and round about Elycrium, I have fully preached the gospel of Christ. Paul says, it is the Holy Spirit in me through Christ. All of it. Every bit of it. This ought to get you off the hook. This ought to take all the pressure off. This ought to be the greatest front row seat to any ticket or show you've ever bought in your whole life. Amen. The more he uses you, the more you're going to get to go, Dude, that's amazing. Did you? I remember the first time somebody threw crutches down and got his heels started running around the tent. I, was, I, I felt you such a... Yeah. <laughs> oh, ah, oh my gosh. I mean, I mean, I know it's the word. I preached it. I'm yeah. looking at it. But, <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. Flopping like a flamingo, right? Elderly lady, flopping. Yeah. After the meeting was over with, I'm hiding behind the bus so that no eyes will be on me. Amen. And they found me in the dark, in the field behind the bus. Oh, senor, it's aquí, aquí. Voy en enfermo. <laughs> Okay, be healed in the name of Jesus. Wow. Running around in the dark up in the field, screaming, calling like a chicken with his head cut off. 
Jesus is answering some of his critics in Matthew 12 and 28. But if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come to you. Now we're going to get into the message right here real deep and real good and real quick. Luke 11, 20 quotes that a different way. But if with the finger of God I cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God is upon you. So he calls the finger of God that cast out devils the Spirit of God. So when Jesus walks up to a demon possessed person and he tells that devil to go, what is the power that grabs that devil by the throat, beats it down, drags it by its head, feet first, and says, boy, you better get on out of here before we give you a real tail But you know it's coming. You know it's coming. There's an appointed time for your pain. But right now, you better get on out of here. Well, that's the Spirit of God. And where is the Spirit of God right now? In you. In you. Now, if we want to get real technical about it, turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10, and, and we'll show you the practicality of it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7 through 10. But the manifestation of the Spirit, or I would say it this way now, the manifestation of the finger of God. You want to see the hand of God in your life? You want to feel the hand of God on you? Well, where's the finger? In the hand. Well, you're going to get to know some of these things. But the manifestation of the finger of God is given to each one for the prophet of all. Now, skip through 8 and look down at 9 to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles. Those three are grouped together. Those three, above all other three, are involved in the casting out of devils. And why are we talking about casting out devils and healing at the same time? Well, I'm glad you asked. But in the casting out of a devil, or of a spirit of infirmity or an unclean spirit we're going to talk about in a minute, you're going to see that it is, first of all, the gift of faith. Because it's not normal faith to tell demons to leave people's bodies. And it's the working of miracles. Because that's not a normal, that's not natural at all. Demon possession is not natural. It is super natural. So when you step up to the plate and do it, that's those gifts given by the Holy Spirit in manifestation taking place. All of this is, is geared to coach you towards, to educate, encourage, build your confidence towards being fearless about everything. I don't care what the situation is, I don't care how weird, how awkward, how uh, I think I read this kind of come cut out but by leaving. I'm going to leave and come back. No. No. These kinds come out by the manifestation of the Spirit of God. Which you get more sensitive to as you pass and pray. And so when you walk up to a demon possessed person and you say, Satan be gone in the name of Jesus. It, it, they're not your physical body's not going to go over there and just pop them upside the head and tell it to go. It is an invisible interaction that visibly manifests. The spirit in you comes out of you on your words in the authority of the name of Jesus, grabs them by the throat, empowered by a gift of faith and the working of miracles, and snatches them right out of it. And now that person. Spirit is delivered. And you best get them born again and fill with the Holy Ghost right there as quick as you can. Now, we just did this in Minnesota. Uh, two trips ago, two months ago in April, I was in Worthington. And on my way up there, I had uh, got two emails from teenagers themselves about thoughts of suicide or depression. And then another adult about another child. And, and so I'm trying to set up 
one-on-one -on -one sessions with them. After services, before services. Yeah. Because some of these things, it would be good to have some time to have individual attention. Yeah. You can get it right there in the service. You can get it without the service. But in these kinds of cases, I felt like they're yelling, a little more untaught. I had led one of them, two of them, to the Lord. You know, I felt responsible. You know, they had been real faithful about going to the church that they were wanting the Lord in. Tend to only go when I'm there, and I'm trying to overcome that for them. Well, we're in service, and I'm teaching a message called Born for War. And we're talking about all the different spirits that attack churches and people. And we're just naming them, exposing them, and then having, the, having everyone in the audience denounce them, find them, cast them out. Just one by one. If you're dealing with this, say this. Well, I, naively, I mean, I guess, well, I, I don't know if I didn't think it was going to stir up devils or not. But one, one of the teenagers that was there that had contacted me and had brought the other, they were boyfriend girlfriend, said, the girl has just left the building. I, know, I, I saw her off the back. I thought she looked mad. Yeah. He says, but I got her to come back in. But she's underneath the pew, screaming. Would you pray for her? Well, I mean, if you don't know your stuff, you might be like, yeah, I'll pray for her next week. From a distance. No, no. That was, that, that's why we're here. It's that people For this cause, I've entered into this church. So I went back in. I've got people right then at that very moment praying to be filled with the Holy Ghost. This is the Latino church. A Spanish-speaking church about a prophecy. I have an interpreter for the whole service. But the kids don't need it, but the adults do. So. Plus, it's just fun. That's what this is. Good. And uh, they're very passionate. And the services are, are not quick. Yeah. And so we go back there. And sure enough, here's this four foot three teenager <laughs> stuck under a, a, a pew with her head against the brick wall and her hands over her ears screaming. So I reached down with my hand and, and said, hey, so-and-so, this is Pastor Eric. Come on, stand up. And my voice hit her spirit. And you've seen the slot machine where the numbers do like that, and then they settle. Her eyes, and then they settle. Oh, yeah, yeah. And she stood, like, you know. And I had her by the hand. She said, no, 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 no. And I said, come on, let's go down front. It's very calm, very contrite. I don't think we're down front. I said, oh, come on, we're down front. I said it. I don't want to go to that front. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then I said, Satan, you shut up in the mm -hmm. Jump back about three or four steps. Look at me. And like a pool, get ready to charge. <laughs> and run it at me. Oh, and I said, I advise you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. And when they got to me, it was like, <laughs> Amen. Like, like, like they were just going to run through yeah. it and got to me with it. So then I said in my loudest, thunderous <laughs> voice, Satan, come out of her in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Falls out on the floor. Woo, Lord, and I felt in my spirit at least. The spirit of God said, she's yeah. free. Let's go back down front and finish our prayer line here. On my way down there, I saw my spirit man. Well, it's a little later on. My spirit man, I saw. Well, I went back down there to the, to the thing to get finished getting my people filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the mother of the boyfriend dragged the girl up, walked her down front. She stood before me like this, weeping. I want you to say this with me out loud. Jesus is the Lord of my life. Jesus is the Lord of my life. I renounce 
say.
Our answer is found in Romans 5 and 12. Whereas by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Then physical death and all that produces it are the direct results of sin. Maybe not your sin, but Adam's sin. I, I've recently had a handful of people that got delivered because we explained, got their healing because we set them free from what? Evidently, you didn't sin. This is just because Adam sinned. Sorry. <laughs> No condemnation. Get out from under condemnation. You know, I pray, what did I, what did I do? What did I do to let this in? Well, you were just born into a sinful world, into a sinful situation, less than God's best. Don't take it personal. Return to sin. Sickness and disease. And they got a deal running around the building just, just a few weeks ago. Well, then how came man to sin? If sin is the author of death and all that produces death is, is from sin, and most definitely sickness and disease is a cause of death. Well, if you read Genesis 2.17 and Genesis 3, 1 through 19, you'll find that it was Satan who caused our first parents to disobey God. Then Satan is the real originator of sin, sickness, and death. Because they had help. Many deny this and say that God himself is the real author of sickness and disease. Because he said to Adam in Genesis 2.17, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eat it, you'll surely die. But who caused Adam and Eve to disobey God's command, and so bring sin, sickness, and death into this world? Satan. Then Satan, and not God, is the real author of sin, sickness, and death. Can you see that? This explains why Christ said to the man, who he cured at the pool of Bethesda in John 5, 14, sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. His sickness had come as the result of sin. This explains also Christ's words in Mark 2, 9-11, whether it is easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. He says to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thy house. The people would not believe that Christ had power to forgive this man's sins. So he says to them, in effect, I will now prove to you that I have the power to forgive sins, by curing this palsy, which is one of the consequences of sin. When you see that I can cure or take away this sin-produced disease, then you will know for a certainty that I also can take away sin itself. If I can handle the symptom, I can handle the root. Again, we are absolutely sure Satan is the author of sickness as well as sin because Christ always uses the same harsh word epithemal to rebuke sickness which is Satan's word as he uses to rebuke evil spirits so in the Greek when Jesus would rebuke sickness or he would rebuke demon spirits he used the same Greek word epithemal which means get up out of here in Luke 4.35 we read, and Jesus rebuked, and it gives the Greek word, him, the evil spirit in a man, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. Well, we read verse 4, chapter Luke 4, 39, he stood over Simon's wife's mother and rebuked with the same word, the spirit of fever, and it left her. Are you beginning to see the connection? Christ used the same harsh word to rebuke all sicknesses as he used to rebuke all evil spirits. Because all sickness is caused by Satan. This is the only explanation. Yes, every sickness, disease, and deformity which Christ cured while on earth was the result of sin, Satan's work. Read Acts 
10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Then all Christ cured while on earth were oppressed of the devil. This included also Lazarus' sickness, even though Christ declares in John 11 and 4, this sickness is for the glory of God. Let us here examine this word oppressed in the Greek. It means I hold power or lordship. So in Acts 10, 38, it really means those under the domination or lordship of Satan. Yes, every sickness, disease, and deformity Christ cured while on earth was the result of Satan's work. And it is the same today. Not only is Satan the originator of sickness, but he is the propagator of it. For the Bible informs us that he has special evil spirits whose chief business is to make people sick. In Luke 13, 11 we read, And behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bowed down together, bent double, and could in no wise lift up herself. Luke 13 and 16 informs us that this was Satan's work. And ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound low these 18 years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? Notice the words, which had a spirit of infirmity. The word for infirmity here is asthenia, the commonest word in the Greek language for sickness. Then this poor woman had been dominated for 18 years by an evil spirit. A spirit here called a spirit of sickness. Yes, Satan really has spirits of sickness, whose one great work in this world is to propagate sickness and disease. In Mark 9.25, we find Satan also has deaf and dumb spirits. When Jesus saw that people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, No, these spirits are persons. Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. Then in addition to spirits of sickness, he also has deaf and dumb spirits. In Mark 1.23 we read, And there was in our synagogue a man with an unclean, or an unwashed, dirty, foul spirit. Then Satan also has spirits who are specialists in polluting men's minds and imaginations and making them immoral. In Acts 16 and 16, we read of a girl who was possessed with a spirit of divination, literally a spirit of Python. This was an evil spirit which gave her the ability to foretell them. Satan then has all kinds of evil spirits, and thousands of these belong to that group designated as the spirits of sickness. No wonder we read in Ephesians 6 and 12, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. Yes, Satan is not only the originator of sickness and disease, but he is the propagator of the same, me same by means of these many evil spirits who obey his every command. Are there instances where in the morning, when Satan is handing out his marching orders, that he dispatches spirits of sickness to people's houses? And, and because of man's own mouth, Is it welcome right now? For instance, what season is it in the winter? <laughs> Why, you've got just as much right to call it the health and healing season as you do the other. Well, let's go a step further. What season is it right now in the Gulf? The gentle breeze season, isn't it? The calm winds that peacefully obey our authority, right? None of this. But yet man, through his own mouth, has said, Y'all come on in. Take your shoes off, stay a while. Why? Because of sense knowledge. They contact this world through the five physical senses and from there deduct reality and reason. The problem with that is we live in a fallen world where Satan is called the God of this world, the Prince of the Power of the Air, and he will manipulate circumstances if you allow him, and he will get your words. 
and you will authorize and deputize him to do whatever he wants to do because you're a sense knowledge Christian. If that be the case. So, I wanted to draw attention to this because not every time when you're ministering to the sick should you be praying, Lord, by his stripes they are healed. And extend your faith with me for your healing. Because you may rub the hair off their head and rub your fingerprint prints off, and they will still be sick because it is a demon spirit that needs to be rebuked, and then healing will manifest. But you, this is there are no hard, fast rules. This is why you need to be totally dependent on the Holy Spirit, because each case individual is revealed by God. And you really don't want to be rebuking demons out of people who have no demons that they're dead. You know, you don't want to do that. But then on the other hand, you need to be rebuking spirits off of people when the Spirit of God says, uh, rebuke that spirit. Rebuke it. And then just let it... If they want to argue with you after they're well... Well, they'll lose that argument. You know. I gave you the example of Asia in Louisville recently that got healed of the cancer around her heart, didn't I? And I told you there that the Spirit of God had revealed that she had allowed that in because of a bad relationship, a spirit of infirmity, and that's what was causing the cancer. Did I share this with you? Well, I've got a friend that lives here in Tampa that has seen the healing ministry up close that the Lord uses through. And, uh, you know, from time to time, of course, living their life, they come across somebody that was diagnosed with just a short while to live. A single mom of three. Uh, African American lady, whether what that matters or not, and uh, had been diagnosed with breast cancer and had already had a double mastectomy. Went to the doctor on a particular Friday, and the doctor took an x ray and said, uh, You need to have surgery next Friday to have the fluid removed out of your lungs. Be beyond the cancer, <laughs> there's that complications. And uh, the friend of mine here in Tampa, who's from Louisville originally, where this girl lives, says, you need to call Pastor Eric. He can help you get your healing. He's helped many people. Call him. Because it works that way. If any sick among you, <laughs> let him call the elders. I, I can't chase everybody down. I'll pray for anybody. I'll help anybody. I'll, you know, but eventually there comes a time if you have a need, call. And uh, it took her some time. I don't know, maybe because she didn't know me, maybe because it was an awful, maybe, you know. But until you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you probably won't do it. But she eventually called. She called on Tuesday between the Friday. Right here in this room, I was standing right over here at the time. I heard her say, right here where I'm talking to her. We're getting ready to do a Tuesday night, and the title of the message is, I Will Live and Not Die. And uh, I was ministering to her some of that message. And in the course of the conversation, she began to open up about her life. You know, any good doctor will probe and listen to be able to diagnose the situation. And that's what, we're, that's what we are. But I hate to call it the divine healing technique. Well, knowing this, I'm listening. I mean, maybe she, maybe, maybe she, because she told me, I've had all kinds of people pray for me. All kinds of people. Well, okay. But you got to pray in faith. Somebody's got to believe right now. Right now. Yeah. You're well. Right now. Yeah. Not, not hope so. No, so. Right now. And if I have anything to offer other than some of the other things I've seen, I'm more inclined to be right now. 
As long as you won't interfere with my faith, I'm going to get for you right now. Just, just, I, and, and I heard people say, well, it's easier to raise some folks from the dead. If they just go ahead and die, you can get them resurrected as quick as you get them healed. Because as long as they're alive, their faith is just fighting to them. They, they want to die. You know, they can't, they're not believing. So when they're dead, they're not opposed to you because they're dead. And you can override that. Well, I'm listening. And she tells me about her boyfriend. And the Spirit of God says, ask about that. Well, I discovered in the course of our conversation that this fella was, was wow, not a good character. No, not at all. And I won't go into all the details. But uh, the Spirit of God says, that wrong relationship, that soul tie, brought that spirit in. And it lapsed off it. Evidently, she should have done better. And it went on for a while, 12 years. I mean, it didn't make you think twice about who you go out with, on it? Is this going to cost me my life? Do you think that these things aren't life and death, but they are? You just you can't mess around about this stuff. You can't be unequally yoked. And I'm not just talking about unbelievers. I'm talking about unbelieving believers. So, uh, and I mean just even people you go to church with. I mean, they may be listening to the same words, hearing the same stuff, believing the same stuff, but are they doing the same stuff? I mean, I'm talking about people that are doers, not just hearers. So anyway, um, I said, Asia, I'm going to do something a little different than probably anybody has done before. I'm not going to pray for your healing. You don't need that. You need that demonic spirit of sickness that came into this bad relationship to be rebuked. Yeah. And healing will manifest. And I talked about very promptly. 45 minute phone call. There you go. That's Tuesday. On Friday, she's going in for her scheduled surgery. I never met her personally at that point. Went in the same room with her. She's in Louisville, Kentucky. And uh, she's going in surgery. I always advise people after I pray with them, and I know the Lord's you know, conditions were met, have another extra. I dated the nurse one time. Got her filled with the Holy Ghost. I was a missionary day. Got her filled with the Holy Ghost. Did you know that missionary day is that? day? Means they're not where you are, you're gonna bring them up. You're on a mission, you're a missionary to them. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Not gonna leave that alone. And uh, she got filled with the Holy Ghost and she was an emergency room nurse for seventeen years. And she I told her she had had a problem with her throat. And I laid hands on her and she was instantly healed. I mean, 11 years she had a problem with her she was healed. So she said, well, I'm going to do this. I said, well, I got to just take your hands right on this person. Play by faith in Jesus and you're healed. Let the fireworks fly. So she did that one time in the operating room. It didn't kill anybody. A little more. She was prepping for surgery. She just said, Lord, by his stripes, he's healed. He's healed that hope. And so the doctors come here and open him up and go, please. They can't find this stuff. And then they got to go back and explain to the parents why they operated on this. Yeah. She said, yeah, I, I, I didn't tell anybody. So I forgot. I didn't, I did, you know, I just, my first time, you know. Yeah. These are real stories. So she's being wheeled into surgery. She's got the gown on and the IV in her arm. And she says, Pastor Aaron, they never show me my x rays because I think it's to keep what better sanity that I have still intact. But for some reason, the doctor called me in there because he was taking one more x ray before he operated. And he said, Hey, you come in here and take a look at this. All the cancer around your heart is completely gone. And there's no fluid to do surgery. You're well, you go home, we don't want to see you until next January. This is September. She said, Pastor, they have me in there like a lot of work every She said, this is like the book of Acts. It's like the apostles. 
So what I wanted to build into you tonight, through the use of the Word and the Holy Spirit, is this identification with the Holy Spirit in you. He is the one driving these demons out. Jesus himself said, I drive them out by the finger of God, which is in the Holy Spirit. And so when I see someone with sickness and disease, it's us against it. How can you not win? And so if you listen to the Holy Spirit in you, he'll tell you, no, this is she, this no demonic spirit here. She just needs to heal. And if you'll minister her face, she can heal. Or he'll say, this is the spirit. Rebuke the spirit. And just do it. And they'll be good. I've done both on occasion. And I think the idea was, when we rebuke the spirit, there would be hope. Well, you remember the lepers? He healed the lepers. Was it two that turned back to Bacon? One turned back. And he says, Oh, you can go your way if you made whole. The others got healed, but he got made whole. The others maybe, maybe just had nine fingers still, but they're healed if they got nine fingers, but one fell off. He got made whole. He got restored to his original state. Inwardly and outwardly. So there have been times when I was reading the Spirit. And then I was at, and by his stripes we were healed. So anything that, and that demon's tearing on his way out, straining on his way out, we're ministering healing, goodness and mercy are following at that devil. I've done that before. Not always, but sometimes. Just to kind of reinforce all this, Revelation 16, 12 through 14, and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water there was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits, yes. like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are spirits of devils. So he calls unclean spirits spirits of devils. Luke 13 and 32. And he said to them, Go ye and tell that fox, I cast out devils and I do cures. Notice how the order here. I cast out devils and I do cures. Because it's a whole lot easier to cure people once the devil's been cast out of them or off of them. Acts 5, 16. There came also a multitude of the cities round about Jerusalem bringing sick folks and them which were vexed with unclean spirits. And they were healed every one. For unclean spirits crying with loud voice came out of many that were possessed and many taken with palsy and that were lame were healed. So evidently, because that's a colon, not a semicolon, the possessed were possessed with spirits of sickness, which was causing palsy and lameness. You see? Luke 13, 11, Behold, there was a woman which had a spirit of infirmity 18 years. Well, we read that example earlier. And he says, Ought not this daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound, be loose? So he told that spirit to come to Now I want to say something right now. Christians cannot be possessed in their spirits. But Christians can, can have demons in their minds, demons in their flesh. Yep. Pornography is a demonic spirit that many Christian men are 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 just overwhelmed by fear is a spirit that many Christians are either oppressed and afflicted with or possessed in their mind with the spirit. Uh, lunacy, you know, craziness, mental a lot of that is demonic spirit. Most all of it is demonic spirit. I grew up around it, I've seen it firsthand, I know it's the best. Uh, let's trace the root here. Man in the garden is at perfect oneness with his God. Satan enters the picture. Man succumbs to temptation and sins. And with that sin, he brought death into his reality. 
and all things that produce death, sickness and disease being two of them. It just stands to reason that when God rebukes sin and God rebukes sickness, that he uses the same word. Because however you get to it, if you start with sickness, you're going to work your way back to the root of it, and it's going to be sin. Either their sin or Adam's sin. You know, babies that are born deformed, that's not their sin. That's not even their parents' sin a lot of times. If they weren't on track and drugs and all that stuff, didn't beat them. They were just normal people, had a child, the baby was born that way. Well, that's, it's still caused by sin. Whose sin? Adam's sin. See how all this takes the pressure off of people? I know lots of people struggling with that. We love God. We believe God. What's wrong with our child? Well, you can't, you can't receive a healing from a God you think did that to your kid. You know, and you try to tell them, well, it ain't God. It was Adam. You think that liberates people. To know that, oh, you mean we could see our child normal in this lifetime? Oh, absolutely. Oh, if you if you do the things it takes, you can cause any any deformity, mental or physical, can be righted and made whole. Any one of them, if the conditions are met. Get it? It's all throughout history, starting with Jesus. Arms growing out, legs growing out, minds getting right. Azusa Street, healing ministries today, I've seen a lot of it. I'll see more, exceptionally more. You'll see more, exceptionally more. As long as we'll keep right here at this, keep right here at this, we'll be building in the Spirit. Glory, glory to glory. And you'll just find yourself walking up to somebody, mind your own business, in the faith of these teachings, in the faith of this Word, and what's in your heart, we will just arrest that situation. And like you've never had confidence and faith before, God will rise up in you and will run right over that demon spirit. And that person will be made whole and set free. That's what we're doing here. That's what we're building here. I think we'll save the rest of this. I think we've got more we need to get tonight. Not going to go long for long sake. It's the 4th of July tomorrow. Let me let you go so you can get ready to enjoy yourself. I appreciate your faithfulness to come tonight. Uh, you've been so so faithful and such a blessing. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for the word tonight, for your message tonight. Thank you for the Holy Spirit's power and his ability to perform the healing that, that we saw Jesus' his ministry wrought, that we see in our own lives. We want to see even more. We see God. We ask for illumination along these lines even more. We ask for more divine opportunities. That you would stretch forth your hand to heal and to perform signs and wonders and miracles in the name of the Holy Child Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit at work within us. That he's able to do exceeding abundantly above and beyond anything we could ask or think or dream according to the Holy Spirit power at work within us. We claim that done. We claim fruit for our labors. We thank you for the praise reports that we know are forthcoming in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Guys, thank you for coming tonight. I'll get this up as quick as I can and we'll be able to share it around and spread it around. And God will get the glory. There's some coffee cake type stuff back there if you want some coffee and some sweets. Um, there's bread still. Please feel free to take it. Amen. Let's do it.